three compared to what you had scouted against and what the game plan was? Uh, yeah, they've been doing that every night. I mean, they, they hit a few few more off the bounce, you know, than we anticipated. We wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we try to do the best we can to take away their, their drive and kick game and their catch and shoot threes, um, you know, but just wasn't enough. And what were you looking for with the lineup switch to start the game, Brent? Uh, just to give us a little more diverse uh, offensive attack, you know, playing through the ability to play through Keith a little bit in the post. Uh, having a ball handler out there with Braun was something that, that we really wanted to do after the overtime game the other night. Um, you know, so Talon or Alex was out there the, the whole night with him and, um, you know, just giving us a little bit of a fresh look, a, a different look after losing three in a row. Okay, we'll start with Kyle again, please. Hey Frank, um, didn't ask you pregame, but is is Dan still set to to come back for you guys on on Friday? Are you still hoping for that? And, and what might be the process to to get him acclimated? Yeah, it's still possible that uh, you know that he plays Friday. Uh, we're still hopeful that he clears the protocols. Hey Frank, um, obviously, if Dennis is able to come back, um, it'll give you guys a little more punch. I think that's what Kyle was trying to ask too. Um, what's sort of the hope um, adding that kind of a player could be to obviously a group that's kind of looking for a lot of different stuff right now? Well, Dennis carries a big load for us. You know, he, he's a big minute guy um, you know, that really uh, moves the needle for us on a defensive end with his containment and pressure, sets a tone for us. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, the, the versatility he brings to, to the table offensively with the ability to, to bring the ball up and uh, and have another ball handler alongside Braun, um, but also carry the scoring load as well. You know, I think we missed him on both sides of the ball. Hey, Benjamin, please. Right, obviously, we know that you're missing two starters, but how, how do you view the Jazz as an opponent compared to all the other teams you played this year in terms of how strong they are? Yeah, they're the hottest team in the league. You know, and uh, no, but nobody's playing as well as Utah Jazz uh, in the NBA right now. Just the way they're shooting the ball, the way they're connected defensively, um, you know, the continuity that bump that they're they're getting by having the same team come back, um, you know, all those things are are playing out well. Coach Quinn Snyder's doing a phenomenal job with them, and um, you know, they're they're playing like the best team in the league right now. Let's take a couple more, Frank. Um, Claudia Jester, please. A friend, at the end of the third quarter, LeBron was the only player to be in double figures, and the Jazz were out rebounding you. What was holding you, your team back tonight and besides you that being so good? Uh, yeah, we just didn't play well enough. We didn't guard the three-point line well enough, and um, you know we didn't answer back. We had a 17-point offensive third quarter, um, you know, which uh, you know really limited you know with what we're trying to do in terms of answering back uh, with their three-point attack. Right, and last question, Leonardo Torres, please. Hi, Leonardo Torres from Peru. On this losing streak, what has disgusted you the most about the team? Uh, nothing's disgusted me. Uh, you know, I love our guys. We're competing, we're grinding, uh, we're staying together. We know we're shorthanded, and uh, you know, it's a tough part of our, our season. You know, but we know it's a it's, it's a marathon, and uh, you know, our group's staying connected and you know, ready to compete again on Friday night. I try to turn, thing, turn this thing around, but um, you know, very confident in, in, in our group.